once we break the bar, right, a lot of times too, like how I break the bar is gonna dictate the route that I'm gonna take the pass. All right, like, like for instance, let's just say I broke the bar the other way, right? Like just bear with me, all right? Let's just say I broke the bar the other way that I was talking about. Like the guy with long legs works really well, where I keep my leg, my uh, uh, arms, uh, hands in his armpits, I create this space in the front, that hole in the front, and I take one knee, and now I come back like this, and I drive down, and I get my knee in, right? If I get here, chances are I'm gonna start the knee cut. Right, because I'm in my combat base, I just want to come over and I'm going to look to pass this guard like that. Right, that that guard open is setting me up for a knee cut. Right, it doesn't mean that I need to knee cut. I can easily stand up and do a Coriander pass. All right, but that technique blends well with that pass. Right, that pass blends well with that open. Right, when we open up the guard the way that we did. All right, there's, we're, we're almost to like an over-under situation, right? But we're not on our knees, all right? When I say over-under situation, over-under passes is generally where I have one leg down to the mat, the other one hoisted up on my shoulder, where I have the choice I can start going over his leg, right? With a lot of different techniques and different passes, or going under his leg, all right? With a lot of different techniques and passes, all right? So we're kind of in that position, but we don't have it over our shoulder. Okay, so we're a little bit set back, but when we do stand, all right, and I could easily put myself in that position by putting my arm underneath, and I'll show in a second, where I'm here, I'm here, my elbows are tight, I step up, I open this guard, if I wanted to, I could reach around here, and now I'm in my over-under position, right? But before I even get into my over-under position, I'm in another position where I'm standing up on my feet, all right? And when I'm standing up on my feet in that particular situation, a pass that I like to use is like a light drive. Right, his leg is on my hip, right? And you're gonna see I'm gonna show two different variations that we're going with the leg drag and two different ways of depending on the grip that I use of how I maintain the side control. Okay? So again, when I get over here, I make the grip of my pants, my elbows are nice and tight, my elbows are nice and tight, I post my leg, this foot, I drive my heel down, and I get it down. Alright? I don't want to keep my hips like, like my my staying up. What should I do? As I posture up, I'm gonna posture up and I'm gonna hip forward. Alright? And as I hip forward, this foot comes right here. Alright? The first way that I'm gonna that I'm gonna push his leg is I'm gonna take like a seat, I'm gonna push, and as I push, this hand is gonna come in between, and now my right hand is gonna go to his head. So that I land on top of him like this. Okay, now what this is doing right over here, because my my arm is laced this way, it makes it very difficult for him to turn into me, right? Because if he wants to turn into me, I'm having my shoulder here trying to turn into me, all right? It's very hard for him to turn into me, I'm pinning his head, all right? But if I don't have his arm, look, he can turn away, turn away, all right? So my arm in, the, in between his leg is preventing him from turning into me. This arm, instead of going behind him, behind his, his, his arm where he could turn, look, I want it to go in front of his arm behind his head. Now this is preventing him from turning the other way, right? Because look, if I didn't have this and I, and I let him turn that way, turn that way. He's anchored to me, right? He's behind. But if I was here, he could go right over. So those two, you know, weaving my arms like that makes him in a situation where he can't really turn into me and he can't really turn away from me, right? So it's a good spot. You should get there, it's you're gonna score your points. You're gonna maintain from there, all right? And that's what I mean by maintaining position. Because if I didn't, like I said, if I came down and I just was like this, he could roll, right? Now you can look to roll, to roll over your shoulder, right? You can start attacking, we go over, we'll put him on the bottom, we go right, right? Vice versa, if I was, if I had this, right, but I didn't have his hips, my hips are here, he could turn into me, start framing, look to regard. Right? So those hands like that, right? I know that's small little details, but small little details make a lot. And that's why like I'm showing that in this class, even though this is basic, I'm making it more advanced for you also, right? Because these little details is gonna be the the, the the side factor of scoring those points and maintaining position. Okay? So you guys notice what I'm doing with the grips, how how I'm maintaining that position by you know establishing my one hand weak between his legs and my other hand behind his head and in front of his bicep. So again, one more time, all right? When I get my grips, hands, hands, elbows tight, step my leg, 
drive my heel, twist and rotate. Now I posture up, hip comes forward. I want this hand to come behind. I don't want his foot to be behind me. So I let this come behind. I push, as I push, this one comes in between. This one comes behind his head. All right, now I know that I have a good pin here. And generally from here where I like to go, all right, I like to take, replace my hand with my foot. All right, now I take this hand out, and now look, he can't turn into me. And if this is MMA, I would love to sit here and just punch him in his face. If it's not MMA, I just take my knee to the mat, and I go right to my mat. Okay, so we don't have to go that far. I just want you to maintain the position, but understand where we're going. All right, so everyone, 